Howdy everyone, it's Rob from New Zealand Post here. Today we're going to be talking about the child accounts feature in eShip. What are child accounts for? There are two reasons why you might need to use child accounts in eShip. The first is if you have multiple workstations that each have their own printers. You can use a child account to give that PC a separate login, and thus their own print client, which allows them to have their own unique printing settings. Businesses where there is only one printing workstation won't need this. The second reason you might want to use child accounts in eShip is if your business has multiple sites. There is a type of child account you can use to give each business site its own courier settings and again unique printing settings. Let's have a look at how to set it up. First, go to settings and then child accounts. One thing to note is that you will not be able to add new users unless you are on a professional or enterprise plan. Because the plans are free to all New Zealand Post users, you can quite easily just switch to the one you need. To do this, go to Billing, click on Your Plan, and then choose the plan you require. As you can see, I have the professional plan selected. Going back, let's create a new child account. Simply go to the child accounts page, and then click Add User. Just like your main eShip account, child accounts must be registered on the New Zealand Post website. As you can see on this page, there's no field to input a password. That's because we create the password on the New Zealand Post registration page. Let's do that now. Switch over to the New Zealand Post website, nzpost.co.nz, and register a new login. Please note that you do not use the eShip registration login page. Instead, just click register at the top right, and then input the email address and password you want to use for the child account. Cool, now that we've done that, switch back to eShip. Put in the user's name, like so, and then choose the type of child account that you wish to use. Multi-workstation, again for a situation where you have one business site, but many printing workstations, or multi-location, which is when you have multiple business sites. You can see if we choose a multi-location account, we also have the option of inheriting the address book from the parent. What this means is, when the parent makes changes to their address book, the changes are seen in the child's address book as well. This allows you to share address book entries, which is very convenient. However, in some cases, you may not want to do that, in which case, just leave it unticked. The first option, Hide Carrier Rates, is available for both types of child account. This feature hides your courier pricing from the print label screen in eShip for that user. This can be useful if you're sharing your account with another business and you don't want them to see your actual carrier rates. Once you've made your selections, hit save and the user is created. They can now log into eShip. As the parent account, we have the ability to override all of our child accounts. This allows us to see what that user sees and make changes to their settings. This allows us to get everything set up in advance before the user accesses the system. Let's have a look at the differences between the two types of user. First, I have a multi-workstation user, bob at test.com. If I override Bob's account, you'll see that Bob has a very limited amount of settings. All Bob can change is his printing settings, so he can have his own printing settings and his own printers, and he can add or edit the address book. The important thing to note 
about multi-work session child accounts is that they share the same shipping queue as the parent. So if I click ship, I'll see the same orders that my main parent account can see. However, a multi-location account has its own shipping queue. Let's have a look at that. Simply move your mouse to the top right, click the username, and choose Cancel Override. And then Child Accounts. Let's override my multi-location user, Mr. Test. Click Override. You'll see that Mr. Test has most of the settings options available, but not all of them. The key one to take note of is that Mr. Test has his own carrier's settings. This means he can have slightly different carriers than the parent. For example, Mr. Test might have the same Courier Post account number as the parent account, but he can now have his own separate site code, which indicates he's shipping from a different location. He can also have his own pickup address. As before, they can have their own printing and address book settings. And finally, their own package setup settings. So they can have their own unique box list if they want to. By default, when the account is created, all the boxes from the parent are copied into the child account. There's one last thing we need to talk about here, and that's what happens when this account has an integration. Again, I'm going to cancel my override by clicking in the top right and choosing Cancel Override. Now we're back into the parent. Something we need to know here is that only the parent can create integrations. Child accounts can make use of imported orders, and they can also import orders from CSV files, but only the parent can configure these settings. What that means is, by default, any orders being imported automatically from an e-commerce site will automatically end up in the parent's print queue. This might not be what you're after. You may want some orders to be delegated to a different shop that you have. You can achieve this by using a rule. Let's cover that very briefly, as there is another video on rules. Click on Rules. Add a new rule. Choose a condition for the rule. So in my example, we want orders going to a particular region of New Zealand to be allocated to one of my child accounts instead of my print queue. So we could use destination postcode NZ and specify a range. So for example, if I have one store in the North Island and one in the South Island, I might want the South Island deliveries to be allocated to my South Island account. For that, I can simply use the postcode range 7000 to 999. The action is going to be assigned to another account, and we simply choose the account name from the list, and then save changes. So by doing this, I can have an integration set up on the parent account, but have orders going to a specific delivery region be allocated to a child account automatically so that it appears in their print queue and not mine. Any orders imported from a CSV file will end up in the unshipped queue for the account that imports them. Child accounts are a very powerful feature, but should only be used when required. Generally, it's much simpler to have one login per business site as opposed to having one login per user, as you might normally expect. However, when you have multiple business sites, using child accounts makes it very easy to manage all the separate sites, as you can access them from one login. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.